AD, you mentioned a couple of days ago, you saw good moments on both ends of the floor in the preseason. It was just a matter of time to see if it would translate to the regular season, obviously. Uh, with tonight, what stood out to you most? Stood out to you most? Um, for a team that averages 120 last year, you know, holding them to 103. Um, I think our defensive game plan, you know, we executed, um, you know, just trying to figure, what, figure out ways to manipulate the game. Made it tough for Ant. I mean, he got some good looks. Um, but for the most part, I think we just made it tough for him, making him shoot contested twos and threes. Um, but I think that our effort um, and energy coming out, you know, was really phenomenal. And we just kind of sustained that for 48 minutes. I know you've seen a lot throughout your career. Um, but JJ mentioned even over the last few days, you guys have installed a lot. How do you feel? Oh, installed JJ, yeah, installed a lot. How do you feel like you guys were able to balance that throughout tonight? Yeah, um, the game plan, the schemes that he have on both ends of the floor. Um, you know, he he trusts us. We trust him as far as, uh, you know, what he teaches us, um, what he wants us to do on the floor on both ends. And it's our job to go execute it. I think we were very prepared tonight. Um, like I said, we executed the game plan to a T. Uh, I'm not going to tell you the game plan because I know Minnesota will probably be watching this and you know, figure out you know, how to try to beat us next time. But um, our game plan was, was elite, and we executed it and um, you know, able to get the win. AD, there was a moment there in the third quarter where you and Anthony had a little exchange after you had that. We wanted to punch me in the face. <laughs> that what he told you? No. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the air went. to do that. <laughs> but you don't know, but you're not someone that we see talk ish. Yeah. This time you kind of did. Was there something behind that? Or is that just no, like. That's my guy. Okay, okay. No, 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 that's my guy. Uh, I got the N1 and just competitive nature. He hate. Uh, Actually goes back to the Olympics. We talked about it, and you know he said, you know, we're the team that he hates playing the most because we don't let him play. Um, you know, we make him pass the ball, and uh, you know I got the and one on him, you know, and screaming at him, and you know he just brotherly love. You know, that's my guy. Um, call each other twin, same name, stuff like that. So uh, it was nothing serious. It was nothing serious. And da da da. It is the team that was in the Western Conference Finals, yeah. and obviously they. Changes to the roster, but a formidable team. In the West, and you guys, there from the second quarter on, kind of controlled the action. Mm -hmm. I asked JJ about it. He's like, you know, all we have right now is a team of players and coaches that have bought in, yep. and we're trying to build something. So, so how, as one of the leaders of the team, how do you make sure everybody stays bought in, stays building, and this is not, you know, getting too high? I guess yeah. off of no, and that's what he said. He told us, you know. We're gonna have games where we, you know, win five in a row. Games where we stretches where we win five in a row. Stretches where we lose five in a row. Um, but we have to enjoy the process. You know, um, you know, we, we try to stay even keel, try to stay balanced. You know, obviously it's the first time we want to open a night since '16, and um, you know, JJ's first win. You kind of just get that out the way. Uh, but you know, we're gonna come in tomorrow. You know, watch film and, and try to get better, and get ready for Phoenix. Um, over the next couple of days, so uh, we're not trying to um, obviously you know, downplay you know this moment. Obviously, you know starting off, I want to know something that we haven't done since I've been here. You know, since Brian has been here. So I think D'Lo might have been a rookie, maybe second year in the league, second. third year, second year in the league, or something like that. So uh, and having Julius was on that team as well. So. You know, we enjoy it tonight, but then uh, tomorrow we come back and get ready to get back to work and uh, you know game plan for our next opponent. Some players can be some players can be slow getting going. You had a huge game tonight, first game right off the bat. What's that feeling like? Do you normally come out big like you did tonight? Um, just carry over from the Olympics. I mean, I've had a summer where I got to play basketball. Um, my body's feeling good. Um, so I think that was just the main part, playing high level, playing high intensity, intensity with uh, some great competition, uh, along alongside some great players uh, who just made me better. Uh, learning from them guys, and um, you know, coming into camp um, ready to go, um, trusting the work that I put in all summer, and um, just translating into the regular season games. AD, somebody who watched Bronny come up and who knows every bit everything that he's gone through and who's also very good friends with, the, with LeBron. What was it like seeing them share that moment on the court together tonight? Oh, it was special, um, you know, to be a part of it. Uh, I've been 
Fortunately, I've been a part of a lot of LeBron moments <laughs> since I've been here. Uh, but that's a special moment. I mean, something that you think about, you know, as a father. Obviously, I'm definitely not playing with my kids, but um, <laughs> my boy is three years old until I have no intention of playing with them. But to be able to, um, you know, share that moment with them uh, is monumental, uh, special for our team, but definitely special for them. Um, you know, we wanted that three to go in, Bron throw it to him. We wanted, you know, obviously that to go in, but, uh, you know, just looking, you know, at, at them checking in at the same time at the scores table. Um, gave me like a little chill. So it was just like, you know, you see it in preseason, whatever, but we wasn't really at home, you know, and to do it in front of this crowd, um, you know, just so everybody standing up and take like, it was a, it was a special moment, um, you know, and this is the first time we had a LeBron moment that was, you know, something huge and we, uh, we won. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Every other thing we always lost, so it kind of kills the moment. Chris just seemed like really hard to find any kind of offensive rhythm tonight. What did you see on that end particularly? Yeah, it was, uh, well, you know, obviously we had a ton of turnovers. Those the turnovers were mostly a result of just trying to do everything one on five. Um, really disconnected, like all the flow, rhythm, um, goodwill that we built up offensively through the preseason, we just didn't have it. Um, and then when we were able to get some open looks, they didn't go in uh, for the large part there. But, you know, we didn't generate enough good ones for that, for us to be able to catch any rhythm. So You kind of had talked about being concerned about that, the shift from yeah. preseason to regular season. Do you just sense that it was guys trying to do too much, or what do you yeah, think? Yeah, I mean, like? listen, you know, that's, again, it's, 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 it's I think, it was my biggest fear from an offensive point of view is exactly what we did last year. You know, we came out game one, and ball got super sticky. We got disconnected quickly, and everyone went one-on-one. -on -one. Defensively, how long might it take to, to maybe iron out some of the communica communication issues and, and things like that, especially that stretch early in the second quarter when it seemed like they were just getting to the to the rim at will? It seemed like guys were unsure of maybe where they were supposed to be. Yeah, I think there was a lot going on in the game plan tonight. Um, you know, maybe too much at times. Uh, we, we might have to simplify some things early here. Um, but, you know, I didn't see a lot of resistance like we normally, you know, like um, – even when we had opportunities to contain, we didn't do a good job of that early on. Um, but having said that, you know they, you know they shot 44 percent, um, 16 from the from the from the three. But it was the offensive rebounds that killed us. You know, the, even when we made a miss and we were able to make a miss, they got um, what did they have in second chance points? You know, they had uh, only had 19, but they had a bunch early on. So. Le LeBron James was not as impactful on this game, but Anthony Davis was. Yeah. What was the uh, issue with him? Well, it was everything. You know, he he got um, he got to the line 15 times. Anytime you Anthony's going to have a big game, he gets to the line. Um, you know, so we didn't do a good job there. He got to the you know he was a big presence on the glass, and then he you know had his mid range fallen, so he played in a complete game um, and just took it to us in every facet. So. Chris, what was the, the key to remedying the, the ball movement at the beginning of last season? Because you, you kind of had that. The willingness to do it. Willingness. Yeah, the willingness to do it. So. Um, another, another question. Um, and then just with, with Julius, um, how, how did you see him in his, his first play here, and particularly in the minutes when he was uh, with Nas, I guess, is the second part of that question. Yeah, I think, um, you know, that that's a, a, you know, a partnership that we – you know, have, we spent a lot of time with with Julius Moore and just trying to get him uh, involved in the first, you know, for the first five. Um, less so with the second five. Um, you know, think that one was, you know, defensively we got to get a little bit better there for sure. Um, you know, and that's not on him exclusively at all. Um, you know, offensively we faced a lot of switching. I don't think we were really that smart with uh, how we attacked it. You know, things that we normally do, we just didn't do. I think uh, guys were just kind of too into their own game, and that and when it happens when um, 
you know, you guys just don't make the natural and instinctual play when that happens. So, you you were down 19. You got it to three in the fourth. Yeah. Uh, what what was the best thing you liked about tonight? I mean, we didn't play well at all, and we you know. Got, you know we showed some resiliency there, clawed back in, but we couldn't make enough plays defensively to stay in the game. And then just, you know, um, you know, we got we to gotta find another level of urgency right now. Um, season started, and we, we didn't answer the bell, really. So, How much of generating the ball movement do you put on, put on Ant in discussions with him or because – with how much he has the ball, how many shots he's taking, how much yeah. of that is, is on him to really jump start. I mean, I did. I liked his aggressiveness of getting to the hoop at times, you know, times and getting in there. Um, and uh, I thought early he was getting really good looks. Um, you know, there were a lot of missed opportunities out there. I thought we had some mismatches in the post at times. I thought we had some early, early stuff um, against their gap help. Um, you know, things that we had been picking up, but we just didn't tonight. Uh, you know, it's the, of course, the ball is in his hands a lot, so we're going to need uh, him to move it. But, um, you know, we struggled to get assisted baskets tonight, and that's the key to any good offense. Chris, you went with uh, eight guys in your rotation. Yeah. You kind of got to Joe as a ninth yeah. when Jane was in foul trouble. Um, what led you to choose uh, to kind of keep it at eight? Um, yeah, just uh, coming into the game, I, that was kind of, I wanted to play nine. Probably wanted to get Joe some more minutes. That's the way it kind of mapped out with foul troubles, uh, you know, and being down, I went back um, with some guys a little bit earlier than, I, than maybe I would have normally done, so. Chris, you guys got Rudy's extension done before the game. Just, I mean, from a big picture standpoint, what does it mean to have that locked up and, you know, what he did to kind of create some flexibility for you guys? And um. I haven't heard anything about it. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, <laughs> so if it's official news, then I mean, I'll have to wait to talk about it. So, so. Awesome. Thanks. Guys. Thanks. Yep. History made as LeBron and Bronny played as teammates for the Lakers. They're speaking with Mike in the media. Hey, LeBron, you've talked about you know, the main thing being the main thing for a long time. You won the game, uh, but you know, also just the moment with you and Bronny. How, how did that all hit you in the context of everything tonight? Um, I mean, obviously, um, you know, mission number one was for us to come out and play well and, and win. I, I don't don't think. No, I don't. It's my first win on opening night as a Laker. So uh, I wanted to get that get that uh, done. And uh, I think as a team, we came and played, you know, as close to 48 minutes um, to a complete game as we've played in a while. So that was great. Um, <clears throat> the game within the game, obviously, that moment, us being at the scores table together and checking in together, something I will never forget. Uh, no matter how old I, I get, no matter how my memory may fade as I get older or whatever, I will never forget that moment. Um, and then also, you know, my daughter, um, his little sister, her turning 10, it's like all the, you know, it was, it was, everything was just great today for me. Everything, everything, everything was great. From the moment I woke up, I saw my daughter before she went to school, um, you know, and went to work, saw my son at work, get to the game, and just everything, man, our whole family. It's a great moment uh, for Laker Nation and the way we played tonight. Hopefully we continue to play how we that type that type of uh, brand basketball all throughout the year and then for our families it was, it was a big moment. Thanks. Bronny, as you guys made your way from the end of the bench to the scores table, the crowd seemed to kind of recognize what was going on slowly. And by the time you got there and, and kind of ripped off the warm ups, did you get a chance to kind of take it all in before it was game time? Uh, yeah, I say so. I mean, try not to focus on. Uh, you know everything that's going on around me, and try to focus on going in as a rookie and not trying to mess up. But um, yeah, I mean, I totally did feel the energy, and um, yeah, I appreciate the Laker Nation for you know showing the support for me and my dad. LeBron, um, over here. You, I think I've asked you some version of this a couple of times. There are only so many firsts left for you to accomplish in this game. Um, how does this one hit differently than the others? Uh, I mean, for obvious reasons. I mean, obviously, this is uh, the first time in, in this beautiful history of the NBA that has ever happened, where a father-son um, has been on the same floor, let alone be on the same team, to be able to grace the floor together. So that was just, you know, I, I talked about it years and years ago, and uh, for this moment to come, um, it's, it's pretty cool. I don't know that it's going to actually hit the both of us 
for for a little minute where we really get to sit back. But oh, sheesh, that was that was pretty that was pretty crazy. So, um, but in the moment. Um, like you said, you know, we still had a job to do when we checked in. We, we wasn't trying to make it a circus. We wasn't trying to make it about us. We wanted to make it about the team. And, you know, for us to go out there and continue to play the game, the, the brand of basketball that the coaching staff and, and our teammates wanted us to play, we kept that. We kept the main thing the main thing while we was on the floor, and that was that was good for all of us. LeBron, uh, AD joked that he thinks this is the first time you guys won a game that you had a milestone in and then the kind of reference that that's sometimes taken away from the moment. What, what did winning this game and, and just like the, the result add to the experience? Yeah, I think he said it on uh, starting five too. Um, some of the behind the scenes, uh, like every time you accomplish something we lose, you need to figure it out. So, um, well, we figured it out tonight, you know, to be able to, to have that moment, like I said, and but more importantly, um, as cool as that was for us to win too, like we're, this is a winning business, and you know we happy was able to get off to a good start. LeBron, uh, 80s, 36 points were the most by Lake in a season opener. I think like 17 years. Um, what did you think of the, just the process of keeping him involved offensively throughout the entire game? Uh, he is the main focal point for us offensively and defensively. Um, you know, and you know we got to make sure we continue to give him the ball. I think the coaching staff and JJ they do a great job of always putting them in positions where him being a recipient of the offense, and uh, you know when AD has it going, um, it's our job as the ball handlers um, to continue to feed him, find him, and uh, you know. But AD did what AD does tonight. I mean, with 36, 16, three blocks, four four assists, steal. So. And only one turnover with all the uses that he had tonight. This is a big time. Uh, over here, Bronny. Um, your dad said something to the effect in his walk-off interview of this game has taken a lot. I've lost a lot in terms of time, and I get to gain a little bit of it back now that he's getting to play alongside you. What's your vantage point of that, of seeing him gone, and then also everything that you've been through to, to get to this moment? Um... I'd say at the same time that he's gone away doing his job that I'm, you know, doing my own basketball. Um, so, you know, I've been able to get through that by, you know, from the love of the game, just going out there and, be, and being able to play by myself. Um, but yeah, I've, I've noticed it for sure. It's, it's, it's a lot of time that we haven't had together. Um, but it's just all part of, you know, what we love to do. And there's nothing we can do about that. Um, so yeah, it's it's a great feeling to you know be get, be together for what we love to do. And you can you get the cereal out of your car? <laughs> <laughs> uh, thank God that wasn't my car. <laughs> hey, LeBron. He has multiple cars now. <laughs> he opened that one and then got in another one. <laughs> hey, LeBron. Uh, do you remember what it felt like in that moment, your NBA debut? And what Bronny was feeling tonight, and can you explain that feeling? Um, yeah, I definitely remember that moment. Um, it was very stressful. It was very stressful for me. Um, didn't get much sleep the night before. Didn't get much sleep during my during my pre, my pregame nap. <clears throat> I was extremely nervous. Um, you know, I could, I felt the world of the game of basketball on my shoulders, and I felt like um, kind of pretty much everyone besides my family and friends wanted me to fail. You know, so, um, and I just kind of channeled that in. I kind of was just very quiet the day of the game, and all up until the, the all the way up until the, the, the ball went, uh, you know, went up in the air for the tip ball. I was nervous. My stomach was turning, whatever the case may be. So, uh, but once the game started, uh, I guess the rest is history. You can kind of go back and rewatch that game if you want to. Uh, the rest is history. Um, but it was definitely a moment that I, I felt just. I was very anxious. I was very um, excited about the, the possibility and the moment of actually being an NBA player because it was something I always dreamed about. Um, and to be out there on the floor with um, other NBA players was a dream come true for me. Last two, uh, Rachel and then we'll end with Joe. Ronnie, do you remember a particular game early on when you were a kid where you were either watching your dad or, or watching game on TV when you're like, I want to do that? Watching that... 2016 series it was just like that was just the craziest basketball I've ever seen firsthand. So like that, I'd also say before I got to the Lakers in in France, the Serbia game that we watched was that was nuts. So both of those were like 
dang, this is this is a crazy sport. Like I really want to be a part of this. So yeah, that's some some f special moments for both of us. Last okay. question, Joe. Those are two pretty good ones, uh, Ronnie. What did you what did you think about how it went for you tonight when you were out there? Um, you know, I felt felt pretty good. Um. It's a little anxious going into it, uh, you know. Like he said, that first that first game stepping onto the court, um, it's a little nerve wracking. But you know, once I got stepped on the court, got up and down a couple times, it all went away. Um, so yeah, I, I, I felt pretty good. Not much to it. Hey Lakers fans, welcome back to Lakers News Squad. In today's video, we're diving into Shaquille O'Neal and Charles Barkley's reactions to LeBron and Bronny James playing their first NBA game together. This is a monumental moment in basketball history, and we can't ignore how special this father-son duo is for the game and for the Lakers franchise. Let's break down what was discussed on Inside the NBA after the Lakers' victory over the Minnesota Timberwolves. One, Bronny had a memorable moment. Bronny James was clearly emotional about the experience of playing alongside his father. He mentioned how surreal it was to see LeBron checking in at the scorer's table while he was already on the court. This moment will be etched in his memory forever, and for Lakers fans, it's a historic moment. Witnessing the James legacy continue on the hardwood, Bronny's humility and gratitude stood out, and it's clear he understands the magnitude of what he's a part of. 2. Charles Barkley's Take Anthony Davis Steals the Show While Bronny and LeBron dominated headlines, Charles Barkley didn't shy away from pointing out that Anthony Davis was the real star of the game. Barkley emphasized that this game was all about A.D., he had an MVP caliber performance showcasing dominance on both ends of the floor. Chuck also brought up something Lakers fans have been frustrated with, AD's inability to stay healthy consistently. He mentioned how Davis has fallen out of the conversation of being the best player in the league due to his injuries. But if he can continue playing like he did in this game, AD will be in the MVP talks once again. Lakers fans, this should be music to your ears. 3. Shaq's Insight Bronny's journey has just begun. Shaq took a moment to reflect on Bronny's debut. He praised the young James for his hard work and dedication, but cautioned that the road ahead is long. Shaq noted that Bronny is not yet in the starting lineup and might not even crack the second rotation immediately, but he encouraged Bronny to focus on improving and finding a rhythm. It's all about building momentum and proving himself over time. Shaq's advice was clear. Bronny needs to be patient and grind, but the potential is there. 4. LeBron's Longevity A Testament to Greatness both Shaq and Chuck couldn't help but marvel at LeBron James's longevity. Now, in his 22nd NBA season, LeBron continues to defy the odds. Not only is he still competing at an elite level, but he's also setting the stage for his son's career. This game wasn't just a regular season opener, it was a celebration of LeBron's incredible journey, his family, and the legacy he's building. For Lakers fans, this is a moment of pride as LeBron continues to elevate the franchise while nurturing the future. 5. What this means for the Lakers going forward While all eyes were on the James family, Barkley and Shaq pointed out the bigger picture for the Lakers. With AD playing at an MVP level and LeBron still performing at his best, the Lakers have a chance to be serious contenders in the West. But as Chuck highlighted, AD's health is the biggest question mark. If Davis can stay healthy and if Bronny continues to grow under the tutelage of LeBron and the Lakers coaching staff, this team has all the ingredients for a deep playoff run. The legacy continues. This was more than just a regular game. It was the continuation of a legacy. 
Shaq and Chuck's reactions were spot on. The excitement around Bronny's debut is undeniable, but the focus must remain on AD's dominance and LeBron's leadership. The Lakers have all the tools they need for success this season, and if AD stays healthy, the sky's the limit. But now, I want to hear from you. What did you think about LeBron and Bronny's first game together? Was Anthony Davis the real star of the night? Do you think Bronny can carve out a significant role this season? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And hey, if you enjoyed this breakdown, don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe. Turn on those notifications so you don't miss out on any updates, reactions, or Lakers news this season. Let's go Lakers!